Hi there, Tracy from Kazadan's Equestria and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm heading back to lameness because I haven't quite tied that together. Um, and what I'm going to do over the next few weeks is put together a few, um, I guess, point by point or, or quick guide to diagnosing particular types of lamenesses and how we get there. So this week, I'm simply focusing on, let's decide whether your lameness issue is actually a weight-bearing or a non-weight-bearing lameness. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna look at the difference between a hard surface and a soft surface. So your bitumen, asphalt, grass, sand type surfaces. And what does this tell us about whether the lameness is weight bearing or non weight bearing? Well, on a hard surface, you will likely find that a weight bearing lameness becomes more obvious. And a non weight bearing lameness will become less obvious. Now vice versa for a soft surface. So with a soft surface, your weight bearing lameness will become less obvious and your non weight bearing lameness will become more obvious. So that's number one. So let's look at some other ways you can look for evidence to see whether this is a weight bearing or non weight bearing lameness. The second thing to do is transitions. You might like to do this um, on a lunge rope. Um, and what you will see is a difference between upward and downward transitions. In an upward transition, if your lameness is a weight bearing lameness, you're most likely to see this lameness is less obvious in an upward transition and more obvious if it's a non weight bearing in the upward transition. Vice versa again for downward transitions. So in a downward transition, your weight bearing lameness is going to become more obvious and your non weight bearing lameness is going to become less obvious. So in a non weight bearing lameness, in the downward transition, the only thing this rule doesn't really work for is if you're looking at a um, sticky stifle or an upward fixation patella, so any hind limb, stay apparatus, biomechanical issue, this may not apply to. But for everything else, it's giving you more evidence to point you in the right direction. Remember, this is not a definitive diagnosis at all. We're just trying to point you in the right direction. So once we've done our hard and soft surfaces, our upward downward transitions, now let's circle. And remembering that depending on um, whether the affected limb is on the inside or the outside of the circle, we're shifting the weight and the load. So if you're looking at limbs on the inside of the circle, then it will become more obvious in a weight bearing lameness as that limb is on the inside. It will also become Less obvious if it's a non-weight bearing lameness. Now, if you're looking at the limbs on the outside of the circle, if it becomes less obvious when the limb is on the inside of the circle, it's more likely to be pointing you towards a weight bearing lameness. But if it becomes more obvious when that affected limb is on the outside of the circle, it's more likely to be pointing you in the direction of a non-weight bearing lameness. The last thing I'm going to suggest you use is speed. You may need to do this ridden so that you can control the pace of the horse unless they're really well trained. Um, but some things have become more obvious at slow speeds and some become more obvious at fast speeds. So remember at the moment, we're not trying to diagnose anything. We're just trying to work out, is this a biomechanical non weight bearing lameness issue or is it a pain weight bearing lameness issue? When your horse is working at a slow speed, weight bearing lameness can become more obvious. And when you're moving slowly, non weight bearing lamenesses actually become less obvious. And again, you're seeing the trend here, it's vice versa. If you're traveling at speed, like a bit faster, sometimes the weight bearing lamenesses then become less obvious. So your horse is obviously lame slow, but when you speed them up, they look less. It's likely to be a weight bearing lameness. When you're moving faster, 
So there are a couple of caveats for the low and fast speed. If you're looking at neck shoulder issues or stifle issues, this can give you slightly varying results. And if at high velocity, your lameness doesn't become more obvious, but you notice a horse doing a bit of a skip in the gait, this can also show that the horse is struggling biomechanically to keep up with the pace. So they alter their way of movement, movement and it can look like a bit of an artificial skip movement. Okay, so that's all this week. Really short video, but I'm gonna do a few of these. So this is step one. Is it a weight-bearing or non-weight-bearing lameness? I'm gonna go through some really clear steps over the next oh, one or two weeks to help you then determine, I'd like you to get to the spot where you can say it's a non-weight-bearing lameness, it's in the left hind, it's likely to be this, and start pointing your vet in the right diagnosis, even if this lameness is mild we can maybe catch it earlier. So hopefully this one was helpful for you. Please don't forget, subscribe, click that notification bell and you'll find out every week when I release my videos. That's all that happens. Um, don't forget to comment on the video below, click that like and share the videos around if you find them helpful. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.